Hey guys, this is Nick from bonbonsai.com and today I'm going to be talking about basic bonsai styles. Now before I get started, I wanted to tell you about my bonsai ebook. If you're interested in learning how to prune, trim, and or sculpt, then go to the link above at bonbonsai.com forward slash bonsai book. Now, to get into the topic at hand, or rather about basic bonsai styles, the bonsai, as a Japanese art form, is more regulated than its Chinese counterpart, the panjing. Bonsai attempts to achieve the ideal tree, while panjing attempts to reproduce nature. This is why perfect styling exists in bonsai if you obey the rules, while panjing leave you free to your, uh, you know, your own creative desires, energies. As a result, there are basic styles. So you have the broom, or hokidachi, or hokizukuri, a very harmonious style. This form has branches that develop at a certain height while forming an upside broom. This styling is mainly achieved through a technique called the V-cut. The trunk is chopped where you want the branch to start to develop and then a deep V-cut is performed on the remaining trunk. This will induce buds to break out near the cut. Salcova serrata are notorious for the styling, but maple and other deciduous trees can easily be styled that way as well. Then you have the formal upright, the chokkan. A tree styled the chokkan way is the straight trunk tapering graciously from top to bottom. The first and biggest branch is often situated at about a third of the desired height of the tree and is on the right or the left. The following branch is situated on the opposite side, while the third is in the back, creating the perception depth. As we look at the tree branch structure from top to bottom, the branches are getting thinner, creating a pyramid shape. Then you have the informal upright, which is the moyogi. This style is very similar to the previously mentioned style, as the same rules of design apply. However, the trunk is not straight, but rather forms a sinuous or a sinus uh, shape while remaining tapered. This style is commonly used with conifers. Then you have the slanting, the shakan. Once again, this style is the same as the formal upright, except the trunk is leaning on one side. Branches are grown uniformly on the trunk, like the informal formal upright styles, but the apex is tilted to the opposite side of the trunk, giving it a visual balanced effect. You have the cascade, or the kengai. This styling requires an inclined trunk that is preferably at a 45 degree angle. The major portion of the foliage is below the pot line and sometimes goes beyond the pot itself. It often represents a tree growing on a side of a cliff. A deep pot is used for this style. Then you have the semi cascade or the Han Kengai. Similar to the Kengai. Ke Kengai. I gotta get that down, but this style uh, also has an inclinated trunk. However, the foliage remains at the height of the pot. Now, in nature, we can see this style near a waterway, the foliage having grown on the side and leaning towards the water. While the cascade style uses a deeper pot, this style uses a medium depth pot. Then you have the windswept, or the hukin, hukinagashi, hukinagashi. A windswept tree represents a tree that has been growing in a certain shape due to natural elements. Often caused by strong wind, this trunk is always inclinated in a certain direction and all the branches have grown on the same side. Then you have the literati, which is the bunjin. This styling is often represented in Japanese paintings. It is a tree with a, son, a tall and sinus tr uh, trunk. The foliage it only grows near the summit of the tree. This styling is somewhat an exception to the rigorous rules of bonsai because it does not have specific rules. It represents what the bunjin movement is in Japan, the search for liberty. You have the group and force, the yose ue, ue. This styling often represents a force or a small cluster of trees. It is supposed to be styled in a way that will clearly represent the growing habits of trees in a group. Many techniques can be used to achieve this styling, and many perception techniques are used to create the illusion of a forest, or as Naka would say, having the quality of the invisible beauty of nature. To respect the Japanese art form, an odd number of trees is preferred for this styling. So you have the raft, or the ikadabuki. 
You got that Vuki. The same rules of the group planting apply to this style. However, all the trees or all the trunks emerge from one common trunk. This style is often achieved with a branch placed vertically in the soil. The roots form this branch and the upper part of the vertical branch develops secondary branches that will eventually become the trunks. So you have the multi-trunk style. The, uh, it's going to be Sokan Sankan. This multi-trunk style has different possibilities. The first, which is called the Sokan, consists of two trunks emerging from the same visible roots, their body. Uh, the styling of the upper part of the tree must respect the same rules as the formal, informal, upright styles previously described. Another variant consists of the same but with tr three trunks emerging from the visible roots. This is called the Sankan. You uh, can also have more than three trunks, but to respect the Japanese bonsai, it is preferred to have an odd number of trunks. Now, the same visible roots. Let me try this again. Nebari, nebari. Probably getting the intonation and everything wrong, but I just wanted to try it again. Roots over rock, or the Itsu, ishi, no, Ishitsuki. Ishi, ishitsuki. Ichitsuki, Ichitsuki. I'll get it right eventually. This styling has the specific characteristics of having many visible roots growing over a rock and finding their way to the pot and soul. Now that's all for this video, and thank you for sticking with me while I probably butchered a lot of those Japanese words. I can do better when I'm speaking to myself with Japanese. I am just a little nervous when I speak Japanese, uh, and in, I know someone else can hear me, <laughs> but. Make sure you check the link above if you're interested in, you know, pruning, learning how to prune, trim, and sculpt your bonsai. I'm going to be making a lot more videos, so subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one.